this I'm going to do a video review of the new Ninebot S2. This is the latest in Ninebot's uh, range of self-balancing electric unicycles. I'm going to compare the S2 to its predecessor, the Ninebot 1 E+. I'm going to show the differences between the two models and explain how I think the new S2 is designed for for what type of use. So let's take a look at both of the units. So here it is, this is the 9 by S2 and the first thing to mention is this is a really stunningly beautiful piece of equipment I mean, just look at it, I mean I just can't take my eyes off it this thing is beautiful, I mean it looks like it belongs in a museum of modern art I mean this thing is seriously attractive I'm a little bit concerned that if I keep looking at it longingly for long enough I am in danger that this thing might probably take out a court injunction against me just to protect itself. This is one beautiful piece of kit. When you compare it to some of the other unicycles on the market, this is by far and away the best looking of all of them. So compared to its bigger and its older brother, the uh, E+, Plus, the S2 has slimmed down an awful lot. I mean, it shed a massive two and a half kilograms in weight. It's reduced in size from 16 inch wheel to a relatively minuscule 14 inch wheel. And it's ditched the soft rubbery leg supports entirely. And the circular strip lights that ran around the entire circumference of the E Plus, well they've been replaced with this new crescent lighting system. And also I think to note is that the handles have changed as well. Um, the uh, tilt up handle there you see on the E plus that's been replaced by a much more uh, comfortable carry handle there which is solidly secured at both ends so when you pick it up it's secured at both ends which um, when you've, if you had the old E plus for any length of time they did have a tendency to uh, snap and break off um, after about a year or so's use so we'll wait to see how much better this new tilt up version is Another thing you notice as well is that uh, more of the tyre is exposed um, on the new S2. There's a bit more of the wheel there exposed. Um, and I guess that's one of the very few minor compromises that had to be made. When they reduced the wheel size, they had to uh, make sure that there was enough clearance on the outer shell so it wasn't catching the kerbs or catching the ground. Uh, so a few more inches of wheel is visible, but does this spoil the nine bots good looks? Not in the slightest. The pedals are different too. If you see, these are slightly smaller. Smaller pedals on the S2 as they need to be. And um, they've got rid of that kind of ridged uh, anti-slip plates and replaced them with this sandpaper finish which is familiar to anyone who's ever ridden on a skateboard or used a Black & Decker orbital sander. The effect is good too with that, I mean, as soon as you stand on the pedals your feet seem secure and uh, they seem to stick in place and really firmly planted. Um, and it does give you a sense of secure footing that wasn't really there before, uh, particularly in wet weather you could slip around on the E+. So if I can drag my eyes away from it, let me just tell you how it performs. And to do with that I think we need to take it out on the road. Well, the weight loss and the reduction in size has not compromised in the performance of the S2 in any way, shape or form. It feels firm and solid. I'm just going to turn around, just a little quiet street. Um, and there are regular firmware updates, uh, but you get a sense that this S2 stands on the shoulders of the giants that went before. Unlike other competitive devices where they feel like they're invented from scratch, the S2 comes in having the experience of the E and the E plus and the P that gone before. Uh, and it really feels like it's solidly put together. And fast. This thing will do about 14, 15 miles an hour uh, at full chat. It'll crack along. It'll go for around about 20 miles. 
and it'll take about a couple of hours to charge. So performance wise, it's really very similar to the E Plus. Now we said all that, the E Plus has still got an awful lot in its favour. The extra size and the extra weight it certainly makes it a much more sure-footed vehicle for taking it off road and I've ridden it in some slippy and wet conditions I've even ridden one 200 miles across Wales and on the E plus it does feel with the extra weight and size it's much more confident and comfortable in those off-road settings I'm riding the E plus now and it handles really really well the S2 on the other hand not so good on the cross country in fact I wouldn't like to take one on the off-road situation at all I mean I haven't tried it with the knobbly tyre on it but that'd be like getting the Mona Lisa and then hanging it in a picture frame made out of fish guts I mean who in the right mind would do that you just wouldn't do it so if you're going off-road the S2 is not for you And that's the other thing, the removal of those soft pads from the outer shell has made this S2 something that's pretty unsuited for people that want to do stunts. Um, I mean it's got a beautiful finish on the outer shell but it must be made by the same people that make non-stick pans because being able to grip hold of this super slippy surface and jump up over curbs is really difficult. So the outer surface of this thing is beautiful to look at, probably good for cooking bacon on but not suited for somebody who wants to do stunts. So if you wanted to jump over logs or up and down curbs, I don't think the S2 is made for you. And then let's talk about these new pedals. As I've already said that they do offer a new sense of security, um, much more sure-footed than previous models. But I have to say the quality of this sandpaper finish is questionable. I mean I've only ridden about 60 or 70 miles on this particular unit and already there are signs of wear and tear showing. And I've seen S2s that have been ridden for slightly longer and the plates are already looking like uh, they need to be recovered. But when new, once you step on board, I mean your feet are pretty much glued in place. And on previous models it was fairly easy to shift your weight and slide your feet into new positions, not so much on the S2. I mean it is doable, but I would suggest try and make sure you put your feet in the right place from the very start because sliding your feet while riding, it is tricky and it could result in a spill. Which leads me to my next point. Because the S2 is so good looking, the thought of somebody learning to ride on one simply breaks my heart. And with a price tag of around about £750 and a face that looks like a million dollars, I mean, who in their right mind would be willing to learn to ride on an S2? Learning to ride is a process that can be done in about an hour or two hours, but it is a process that will end up dropping this repeatedly on concrete and tarmac surfaces. And that's like somebody never even riding a bicycle before and then getting on a 50 grand Harley Davidson and complaining once they've skidded it down the street or rolled it down an embankment. Learning to ride an S2 just does not make sense. Okay, so here's a test for you. I want you to go and get a teddy bear. Preferably one that you've loved since childhood. We've all got one. Next, I want you to get a hammer and a large nail or a screw. Then take the screw and the hammer and you have to drive the, the nail through the face of the teddy bear. Okay, here we go. Now, if you are the sort of person that could actually do that, then yes, you are the kind of person that could go and buy an S2 and happily drop it and crash it. But, as I suspect, if you can't do that because you've got a heart and a soul, then maybe think about learning to ride on something a little less pretty, a little less nice. Maybe an E or an E+. Plus. And then once you've got the skills, 
then upgrade it and then get the S2. But the thought of dropping the S2, oh, is like stabbing a teddy bear through the face. I wasn't going to do it. It's okay, I wasn't. So, if the S2 is not a good first time ride, and if it's not good for doing stunts or going off-road or even for jumping up and down curbs, who is it for? Who is it aimed for? Well, I'll tell you, it's aimed at people just like me. So the S2 is perfectly suited to a busy urban environment. The extra weight that's been lost makes this thing much easier to pick up and carry in places where it's not safe or you're not allowed to ride it. And the handle has got a neat little trick up its sleeve too. I mentioned before it's connected at both ends. And when you pick it up, you hear the beep noise there, the engine, the motor is disengaged, which does away with all that nasty, annoying, turn it on, turn it off again, uh, that you had to do with the E+. None of that nasty spinning wheel business. And then when you put it down, drop the handle, it engages again, you simply get on and ride away. And then there's the warning beep, the noise this thing makes to give you alerts. It has been significantly increased in volume on the S2. And just to show you that, I'm going to turn on the E+, plus, then turn on the S2, see if you can hear the difference. You have to get in close for this one to get the... Uh, Get a sense of this. Here we go. I'm going to turn on the S2. No, I'm going to turn on the E+. Plus. Here we go. You heard that? And let's turn on the S2. I mean, this thing really does let you know if there's a problem. It actually screams at you. And that's fantastic. If you're in a busy, loud, urban environment where there's lots of traffic and you start to go too fast or do something it doesn't like, this thing lets you know it screams at you. I mean... It really could wake the dead. And if you're riding along in a country lane, this thing makes a noise, it goes off like a cannon. The birds rise out of the trees at once, like something out of a Hitchcock film. So this is fantastic if you're riding in places where there's lots of noise. So there you have it. The outstanding 9Bot S2. And here's my advice. If you're looking for a perfect commuter vehicle, you're an experienced rider, you want something that's maybe a bit lighter, that's great for picking up and carrying and taking on and off trains, then this is ideal and this is the machine for you. But if you're a complete beginner and you've never ridden one before and you're wanting something that perhaps you could take off-road or you want to do jumps and stunts in the skate parks, then the S2 is not for you. My advice is go out and get an E+. And because the S2 is out now, you might be able to pick up the E+, for a bargain price. Check out speedyfeet.uk and uh, you'll find out lots of information there about the 9Bot products. And uh, my advice is don't hesitate, go and buy one. And that's somebody uh, on a 9 but one S2 holding a puppy. Ah, oh, yes, you're my little girl. Yes, you are.